Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen. Äh, vielen lieben Dank, äh, dass Sie sich die Zeit genommen haben, zu unserem heutigen SDR und Partner Live Destination Update äh, dabei zu sein. Wir möchten auch äh, gleich starten. Mein Name ist äh, Petra Wagner-Zaluski. Ich bin Director of Sales von SDR Destination Handling und ich freue mich sehr, dass wir wieder Partner dabei haben, die Ihnen ein exklusives Update geben von der Destination und wie es im Moment aussieht. Bitte erlauben Sie mir gleich äh, zu Englisch überzugehen, da einige unserer Partner dieses Live-Update in Englisch machen. And that's why I will continue in English. As I told you, I'm very happy uh, that you all joined and I'm very happy that all our partners also joined already. Isabel, could you continue with the slides? Hello. Ah, yes. As you can see, today we have uh, great partners on board who will tell you absolutely news about their destination. Uh, we start with Eades, Maria. She will give you an introduction about how the situation is increased at the moment, following by Magic Road, Magic France, Magic Road, Going Russia, Going Baltic. And, uh, but first, if we start uh, to give you the news <clears throat> about, I just would like to introduce you a little bit SDR uh, destination. SDR destination handling got founded in the year 1980, and it is one of the most established sales marketing offices in the German speaking region. We are so happy that we have more than 30 selected incoming agencies in our portfolio, which means that we can cover around 70 lovely destinations worldwide. So if you have any questions or anything about the destination, just let us know. My colleagues and myself, we are very happy to help you. And um, as I told you already, that today we have uh, so many beautiful destinations. And if you have any questions, please uh, send us your question in the queue box and we will answer all the questions at the end of the complete presentation to uh, give all the partners the time they needed uh, to present all the news from the destination. And yeah, that's all from my side. And I actually would like to hand over to Maria. She is managing partner from Eliades DMC in Greece. You know, this is one of our new partners and I'm very happy that she is here. And Maria, Thank you for coming and please tell us what's news about Greece. Schönen guten Morgen, Kalimera, everyone. How are you? I'm very nice uh, to uh, be here with you. Uh, you know that uh, tourism in Greece uh, has officially started uh, 14th of May. It was not, uh, you know, uh, a starting uh, with a thousand of tourism, but uh, we have um, already a, a good volume of arrivals. Uh, and um, the most important, uh, uh, when you're traveling in Greece, uh, have been summarized in this presentation. So actually we have uh, split it, this presentation into three slides. So you understand that I will be very fast uh, and quick. Uh, before arrival, uh, everybody needs to have a PCR test uh, of 72 hours. Uh, and uh, as of uh, 1st of July, 1st of July, which means after 15 days, uh, people, uh, uh, all visitors that they have uh, their vaccination uh, completed, uh, and it's already 15 days after the second vaccination, uh, and have a valid European digital certification, they don't need the PCR test uh, to enter Greece, uh, and they don't need uh, also any uh, test uh, to go back to Germany. This will be valid as uh, for the 1st of July. Uh, right now and for the next, uh, next uh, 15 days, uh, and uh, until uh, the... Um, a European digital certification is ready. Uh, people need, everybody needs a PCR test to enter the, uh, uh, the borders uh, of 72 hours. No matter if vaccinated uh, or non-vaccinated, uh, passengers arriving in Greece, uh, they need to travel a passenger locator form. We have put here the link. It's something very easy. You just uh, inform uh, the, uh, a, a digital platform uh, where you are located and uh, where you spend your holidays 
just in case uh, uh, there is something and uh, uh, the government needs to allocate you or to find you or to notify you for a positive uh, case uh, that came close to you. Uh, so the allocator form, uh, it's easy to be filled uh, and it has uh, a, um, a code that can be uh, downloaded in your mobile. So you just like passport, see your, uh, check your allocator form upon arrival and that's it. Uh, so this is before arrival. Now, during your stay in Greece, uh, uh, as we said, the uh, QR code uh, is generated by uh, the allocator form. Uh, uh, now, things have changed uh, uh, slightly since I sent you this presentation uh, because, you know, the protocols are updating every day. Uh, what is important uh, uh, to know about Greece is that uh, restaurants are open, uh, coffee shops are open, uh, Tours are allowed. We have a really nice participation in all the tours because the people are thirsty to travel and get, uh, you know, go outside the hotel. Uh, masks are obligatory uh, uh, in all the indoor areas, uh, hotels, restaurants, etc. But um, a part of the masks, in, in fact, nothing is reminding uh, the uh, previous months uh, here in Greece right now because uh, the music start uh, two days ago in all the clubs and restaurants uh, uh, and uh, coffee shops uh, and as well as the beach clubs uh, because uh, the beach clubs were open until uh, last week uh, but with no music. Now music is also allowed and uh, all the outdoor areas are open we don't need anyway thanks god the indoor areas in uh, in greece and uh, what reminds the uh, the pandemic uh, still uh, in uh, greece is a uh, face mask and social distancing that we are trying to uh, uh, protect these uh, two things uh, really very very carefully and uh, during the daily cruises uh, we need uh, a self-test. So this is uh, during your stay in Greece. Uh, self-test uh, when uh, uh, during embarkation for any daily cruise and um, uh, face masks uh, everywhere in Dora. Uh, capacity of the buses is uh, 85%. Uh, capacity for the boats is 65%, uh, which actually makes us more happy because everybody has uh, plenty of space. Uh, so this uh, this cannot be considered. Uh, uh, I wish uh, we will keep uh, forever uh, this uh, spacious, uh, you know, uh, um, options. Uh, uh, here I have put that nighttime uh, curfew is until uh, 12 30. this has been changed uh, since the last weekend uh, and it's now 1 30. so uh 1 30 until 1 30 everything is open uh, shops are open uh, and uh, no appointment is needed uh, so this is uh, what is actually happening right now in greece uh, until uh, 1 30 is uh, now since uh, the last two days uh, uh, bars and restaurants open uh, um, I have put that uh, this apply until the 15. Eh? Yes. Uh, so before de departure, things are uh, again easy. Uh, PCR test is requested uh, for those clients uh, that they don't have uh, the um, uh, certificate of vaccine. But uh, in 90% uh, of all the of the hotels, uh, there is the service inside the hotel. Uh, so, in fact, uh, you don't need to book something outside the hotel. You just need to notify the reception that uh, I'm departing on Saturday. For example, can I have my, my PCR test uh, on uh, Wednesday, on uh, Thursday? Uh, it is recommended to have the PCR test uh, two days before departure. Uh, so, in case that something happens wrong, so we can have one between day to react uh, before the departure. So uh, PCR test is only for the non-vaccinated guests uh, and for vaccinated, uh, nothing is required. Uh, you can just fly with the certificate uh, of a vaccine. And um, uh, from uh, um, 
uh, within the destination. I mean, from for domestic flights uh, and for domestic uh, for transit uh, uh, flights, uh, you need uh, um, a self test to go into the plane. That's it. <laughs> Forget everything and reset. This is lovely. Thank you so much, Maria. When I see the pictures, I would just like to run to the airport and just fly away to Greece. So I mean, uh, uh, okay, we have, uh, I mean, the pandemic is, is still here. We are uh, having all the measurements. Uh, you will see everywhere, uh, you know, antiseptic uh, and social distancing. Uh, we are trying to take care, uh, to take very good care of our guests. Uh, we want all our guests to go back uh, uh, fully healthy, and uh, I can tell you that last year, even uh, uh, if it was uh, more uh, fear around, uh, I'm proud to tell you that we didn't have any single positive case uh, in our guests. This is absolutely great. Thank you so much, Maria. And I think what we also should say that these kind of beaches, as empty as they are at the moment, so it's a good sign also if clients are going, no, because now they can enjoy the beach really very much. There are no beach empties, but uh, in every destination, I can recommend you one place that you can find an empty beach. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank uh, you. As I already told you before, if you have any question, just put it in the question and answer box and we will answer after that. And now I'm happy that we move from Greece to France. And Lucy, she is director of Global Things uh, from Magic and Magic France. And I'm happy that you can give us also very good news, right? Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, Petra. And uh, thank you, everything, everyone, for being here today. It's really a pleasure to, to be part of this presentation. So today we will speak about France, which is part of the Magic Roads uh, DMC. And my colleague will follow with Armenia and Georgia. But yes, friends, we have very good news. Since 9 of June, uh, everything is starting to, to move again. And uh, we are welcoming uh, clients again from Europe and Union. It's, it's even easier. So yes, today we will focus on, on uh, France and the new regulation and what is the situation currently in, in, uh, in France. So to start first, uh, let's speak about uh, the situation numbers. Uh, the Ks are really going low. Uh, you, you can pass the slide if you want, Isabel. And uh, we are now with less than 3,000 new cases per day. So it's, it's really a small number considering the past months. So the situation is, is improving. Uh, thanks, I think, also to the massive vaccination uh, of French citizens. More than 30 million people have been vaccinated today. So it's going fast. And uh, today is the exact date uh, where people over 18 years old can get the vaccine as well. So basically, it means everyone can be vaccinated. Things are improving. And this is the result of uh, reopening the borders and uh, reopening the restaurants, bars, etc. We will see it later. And now to travel to France, uh, as I was saying just before, uh, it's super easy since 9 of uh, July. It's not July, it's June actually, <laughs> my mistake. So since 9 of, Ju of June, France has categorized a country with different code color. So we have green, orange, and red, uh, and then different rules will, will apply. But let's speak about France and Germany. So Germany is categorized in uh, the green area, which is a very good, very good sign. Actually, all the European uh, countries are in, in green zone for France. So if you have been vaccinated, uh, you can enter France. You don't need any PCR test uh, nor to do a quarantine. So it's really super easy. And if you are not vaccinated, you still can enter France uh, and you need to do a PCR test or antigen test 48 hours uh, valid pre-arrival, but no need to do any quarantine. So it's fully open. And uh, as Maria was saying before, also from 1st of uh, July, we will have this uh, vaccination certificates ready and we will be connected as well as Germany is already connected now so congratulations <laughs> but from 1st of July everything will be really easy so it's we are talking about 15 days only for now now 
So this is one part. You can come to friends. We welcome you and we are really happy. It's super easy. And then, of course, one day or the other one, you need to go back to Germany, unfortunately. So how to go back to Germany? Uh, since 24th of May, uh, you have also categorized the country with different type of uh, categorization, basic area uh, with risk, high incidence and variant of concern. So France is in basic uh, risk area, which is pretty good. And it's also easy to, to go back from France because if you have been vaccinated, you, uh, you can enter Germany and you need to fill the general registration to, to entry, but it's, it's something very easy and uh, it takes no more than five minutes. And you can um, just upload the vaccination certificate or PCR test uh, to enter Germany. And then you can have exception of quarantine. Uh, so again, you, you can just enter and it, it's super easy. If you are not vaccinated, PCR test. And uh, the good news is in France, we can do the PCR for free for all the European uh, members. So you don't need to take any appointments. You just go close to your hotel or 48 hours before departure to be in the safe side. And we will take care of everything. You don't need to pay anything. So this is basically the situation, which is a very good sign of uh, tourism being back uh, on the scene. We have already some tourists here in France uh, visiting the country. So wh what is happening in France, uh, I mean, in terms of opening, et cetera, uh, everything is open again. So this is the really good news. Uh, France is offering uh, all the cultural activities as usual, the museum are open uh, as the Louvre Museum, um, and we have a lot of museums in France. <laughs> so we need to do case to case basis, but everything is reopened. Cinema, theaters, uh, festivals also, outdoor zoos, libraries, etc. Of course, we have a maximum capacity that came to 65% in general uh, since 9th of June, but of course, it's, it's uh, very correct numbers. And in terms of bar, restaurants, shops, etc., again, everything is open. Uh, curfew has been pushed at uh, 11 p.m., so you have plenty of time to enjoy the nice French brasserie, and uh, you can uh, dine indoor or outdoor. Of course, now it's very sunny in Paris and in France in general. So, uh, yes, everything is going well. Capacity are increasing also. Uh, everyone is going out again. We are super happy to have this type of freedom uh, in, because it's very also it's very safe and well controlled. So to continue, uh, what can, can you pass the slides, please? Yeah, thank you, Isabel. Uh, in terms of uh, general measure, I think it's exactly as in Germany, you have a lot of use of uh, hydroalcoholic gel, respect of social distancing. You still need to wear the mask uh, outside and inside the venue unless you are seated in the restaurant. Uh, we have a very nice application to Santé COVID to upload your PCR, to follow the numbers, to, to be always updated. And even if you have been in touch with someone tested positive, you will be aware. So this is also protecting uh, the French citizen. And as I was saying before, massive control with PCR tests and uh, for free. So for French citizen, but also for European citizen. So this is it. Uh, let's, let's say that the situation is improving. We are now just waiting for you and your clients uh, in France and in our other destination as well, Armenia and Georgia. Thank you very much, Lucy, for this uh, great update and great news about France and the lovely pictures in your presentation. It really makes me feeling like also going there. So if I go now to all destinations, I don't have time to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm very happy also to have your colleagues with us, Tati and Tamuna for Armenia and Georgia. And uh, I think, Sati, you are the one to start, am I right? Yes, with great pleasure. Thank you, Petra. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sati. <laughs> As you already, some of you, we have already met. It's a great pleasure to have you among the audience and um, to have the chance to update the situation in Armenia after this long at least it was a um, year and a half, but it has been, uh, it seemed really a long period of time because of many reasons uh, that uh, each of us knows very well. However, the things are improving um, as in the world, uh, 
as well as in our region. And I should say that um, we have been lucky enough uh, to, to be among the countries who were not um, too affected by COVID, I should say, because Armenian borders have been uh, open since January the 12th uh, by the government decision. And since then, the travelers were allowed uh, to Armenia. Unfortunately, the world was closed. And I was very often joking that however hard we open our doors, um, they are closed for the world. But now, because the things are changing, it's going to, the magic is going to happen. And we will be happy um, to, to make it happen in our destination. So the, it means that Armenia has restarted after COVID since January and um, the schools were reopened, um, all the social places as well, theaters, bars, restaurants, and uh, there were some restrictions, but now they are almost completely lifted and uh, even they're allowed to do some uh, big events. And I should be happily announcing that uh, the wedding ceremonies, we can uh, see the wedding ceremonies being back. This is the sign of uh, the tourism also restarting because we have also some weddings uh, arriving um, to, to have their wedding ceremony in Armenia, for example, from Russia. This is something uh, common. I should say that the mainly the travelers nowadays to Armenia are um, uh, from our neighboring countries, but originally I'm very happy to get the news that um, since yesterday, Germany has announced Armenia to be among the safe destinations and uh, you are recommended already to, uh, your, you and your travelers are recommended to travel to this part of the world. The land borders um, are as well open, uh, but um, we have uh, some regulations to follow before crossing the borders. And uh, Georgia is also uh, trying its best to uh, lift everything a bit later. Tamuna will uh, introduce you all the uh, details regarding the um, ongoing processes also in Georgia. But I should say that by the time you have travelers to the area, everything is going to be settled now, settled uh, in terms of um, even documentation. So the things are more or less the same as. Um, as um, in other places, like now, Armenia is, host, is accepting um, certified uh, travelers as well as uh, vaccinated ones. So if you have a certificate, you can even um, be without vaccination. Uh, but if there is vaccination, no certificate is necessary. A test um, certificate is necessary. So uh, sample of PCR tests are available also in the airport and in cross checkpoints. So if you uh, your country is allowing to travel without a certain measure, then it's even possible to get it here. Uh, I so may, mm -hmm. may I just interrupt you? I just would like to ask, does this also apply for the Austrian clients? Yes. Because we also have yes. our clients here watching these presentations uh, for the Austrian nationalities. So it would Originally, be nice if you could. Thank you for the question, Petra. Very good one indeed. Um, uh, it refers to all the European Union countries in, in particular. And um, all the travelers are arriving to Armenia. No restrictions um, except from visa regulations. Uh, we have certain rules related with visa uh, for the countries who need visa upon arrival, but European Union um, is arriving freely to the region, so um, no, no any obstacle, no any artificial obstacle anymore. If you are used to traveling with your PCR tests and uh, or uh, some of the uh, of the travelers are already happy to get their vaccination, so it's uh, fully possible to just buy your ticket and uh, fly to the area. And um, can we pass on to the next slide, please, Isabel? Uh, the, um, yeah, this, um, the numbers are uh, decreasing since um, Armenia has faced uh, more or less three phases as everywhere else. But uh, the third phase was in um, uh, early uh, February and the, the numbers have started to fade since then and uh, now these numbers are even less like we have less than 80 cases per day uh, so the compared to what we faced in the past this is really something that um, 
um, is is uh, somehow people are not even uh, paying any attention to the numbers anymore because uh, we we start to joke uh, also in the office that COVID is not in fashion anymore, and we are very happy for that. You know <laughs> that we don't uh, we can concentrate on discussing something else. So uh, about vaccinations in general, um, in Armenia, everyone can get vaccinated, even the foreigners. Uh, so without any charge, it's free of charge. And uh, now it's done on voluntary basis, but it started with the frontliners as uh, in other countries as well. So the sanitary measures are there. Wearing a mask in the, the uh, public areas, in, in indoor areas is mandatory, but uh, in certain cases, you can see people without masks. In Armenia, this happens. However, it's always uh, safe nowadays to, to have your mask on in indoor areas. But uh, in other places, it's not mandatory. Um, so that's that's it for, for the time being. Uh, we are again very extremely happy to restart with our uh, travel plans. And we're looking forward to getting your request for 2020. 2020, 22 already, uh, because we are hopeful that the things will uh, still happen by the end of this year. But by knowing the German uh, organizational gene, uh, I am hopeful that we will start getting the uh, request for 2022 um, already and start planning ahead because we are looking forward to getting the travelers again and get on the track. Thank you very much again for this lovely opportunity. And uh, the ball is now in uh, the field of Georgia. Kamuna, our country manager, will be happy to present uh, Georgia Park. Thank, thank you. you so much, Sati. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sati. And uh, thank you, everybody, to be with us today. I'm really happy to join with positive vibes what has been already spoken because the situation is also really improving in Georgia. And I'm happy to share this, uh, this uh, increasing tendency of improving uh, and combating COVID situation in our country. So I will uh, try to be quite brief because more or less the, the measures are very similar and the same to other destinations as well. So um, as for the 1st of June, as already Sati mentioned, um, the land borders were open uh, and we've been waiting for this event for uh, a year and uh, uh, nearly a year and a half. So now uh, we can provide also combined tours with our neighbor countries. And uh, the entry formalities uh, for the clients who are arriving by land um, are divided in two parts. Let's say the fully vaccinated passengers can uh, present their certificate. For the time being, we our government and we require the certificate that they have even the paper one. But once uh, the whole uh, European Union will have this digital uh, passport, so Georgia will also join this process, and then uh, then uh, it will be necessary to present also the digital vaccination passport. Uh, but still, uh, still, they need to present a PCR test with validity of 72 hours, and then travel throughout the country. As for fully vaccinated passengers who are arriving by air, and by the way, we have uh, uh, air traffic open since 1st of August, and we are really happy that German citizens uh, could come uh, with Lufthansa direct flights since last August. Fully vaccinated passengers are not uh, required to present PCR tests. So they can just present their full vaccination certificate, either digital or the paper one, and they will be absolutely free to move and to travel and to discover the country. And as for the non-vaccinated passengers, the ones who are coming from European Union, European Union citizens, they need to present also PCR tests, but they need to repeat it on the third day uh, of their permanence in the country. This is just to prevent and to be sure that uh, not any case is missed. Uh, and they also need to track uh, a special online form before arrival or upon arrival uh, with uh, all their travel uh, history of previous two weeks and also their uh, 
addresses and uh, the routes that they are going to do, because if anything happens and or if any of the, them are uh, like positive during the trip or they are uh, suspected contacts, uh, they will get the notification so that they are they are uh, they be aware that uh, they have the contact or they are positive and the government will start tracking their previous contacts as well so i have i highly recommend that everybody coming to georgia who is not vaccinated uh, fill up this uh, fill in this online form because it's really very uh, important. Uh, so if we pass to the second slide, I would share you the general situation and the general numbers. Actually, we also had three different uh, phrases or waves, but the first one was very easy. We nearly uh, um, managed to arrive till, uh, till autumn with very few with very de few daily cases. That's why for the for around four or five months, country was in green zone. This was a very limited number of the worldwide countries worldwide. Then the second one we had uh, quite uh, quite tough, and the third one, uh, thanks to the vaccination process, we managed to pass quite easily. For the time being, uh, the numbers started decreasing. Uh, we had around 700 cases last week, but the numbers are decreasing. But a lot of tests are conducted um, throughout the whole territory of Georgia. Even if you are, don't have symptoms, uh, we have special um, we have special um, um, segments that um, need to be um, tested obligatory basis. So the positive results are very low. It's not more than one percent or one percent, and very very few numbers. The vaccination process started relatively uh, late. It was like late March because we were waiting for a very long time to get vaccines from World Health Organization. But nowadays, so we managed to arrive up to 6,000 um, vaccination rates on daily basis. And we are waiting for, again, from World Health Organization, some big doses uh, beginning of July. And we will have around 20,000 uh, vaccination rate on daily basis. So the plan is to vaccinate at least 70% of the population till the end of 2021. That's really very promising. And I really hope that we won't have any more waves in the future. Uh, as for the um, uh, general situation um, in the country, so we have a very big relief because apart from the social distancing or the mandatory face mask that's mandatory to wear indoor and outdoor areas as well, we don't have these sensations and we don't uh, we don't have fear anymore because the country is quite good, um, quite well protected. So uh, the venues are open, the tourist uh, places are open, museums, restaurants. Uh, the music is also allowed. Some events are also allowed with the with the, um, maximum restriction of numbers. Obviously, uh, the main um, so we we have curfew that remains between eleven um, nine, um, night hours to four, but it does not interfere with our let's say with our um, tourist movement because uh, we get a special permission during night arrivals and it's not a problem. Them at all. Um, and for the transportation and for all the venues, we have some reduced number of um, capacity, but uh, this is not, uh, uh, but big events are, um, are not allowed, like uh, more than 50 uh, people are not allowed to uh, together for for different events. Uh, what I wanted to mention as well, uh, for the time being, we have direct flights with Lufthansa, with Eurowings, and with Wizir, that's a low-cost airline. And I highly recommend to check the regulations uh, for the airlines as well, because for instance, Lufthansa requires the vaccination, fully vaccination uh, 
a certificate with a validity of more than 14 days, like you should be vaccinated at least two weeks ago, uh, so that you don't need to present any um, additional documentation. Uh, for entry regulations uh, from Georgia to Germany, um, uh, they need to present a PCR test and uh, also fill up a special form. Uh, and we can provide this service in our hotels or in uh, different laboratories if the if the uh, visitors would like to do PCR tests before departing for Germany, we can make this our organization. So I think that uh, this is um, the overall situation for Georgia. And we really hope and we already see and we get uh, um, uh, uh, stories from different countries that uh, we uh, we managed to pass the pandemic and we are looking forward to our guests uh, and uh, we can assure the maximum uh, quality of uh, sanitary measures that will be kept and we have a special protocols set by the government and by the way we have this um, um, uh, massive vaccination of tourism uh, tourism employees in georgia so the government made a special plan and very soon we will have all covid free zones in hotels restaurants tourism venues with all the employees and hopefully tourists as well fully vaccinated thank you very much for your attention and we are ready for the questions Thank you so much, Tamuna, for this also very positive news about uh, Georgia and, of course, also about Armenia. And we would like to continue now to uh, Italy. And uh, I'm very happy that Anja is here today with us, Sales and Marketing Manager from Size Tours Italy. And uh, Anja, I think you will start uh, doing the presentation in German and tell us about how it is when Germans, Austrians, and all of us would like to come to Italy. Absolutely. Herzlichen Dank, Petra. Uh, buongiorno und guten Morgen aus Italien. Um, auch von uns. Wir sind auf alle Fälle ready, um, viele, viele Gäste zu empfangen. Und ich, die persönlich uh, sehr im Norden von Italien lebt, in der Nähe von Mailand, kann bestätigen, dass auch jetzt schon sehr, sehr viele Autos unterwegs sind mit deutschen Kennzeichen, Schweizer Kennzeichen, Österreicher Kennzeichen. Also im Norden Italiens hat es schon angefangen, aber ich möchte Sie trotzdem begleiten durch das Regelwerk Italiens, was wie immer etwas dicker aussieht als es sich dann anfühlt ähm, und, und auf alle Teile eingehen, die, die notwendig sind für die Reise. Erstmal zur Einreise und dabei beschränke ich mich auf, die, auf, auf Gäste aus dem EU-Binnenraum oder innerhalb der Schengen-Staaten, also innerhalb der Schweiz auch mit. Was ist notwendig, um nach Italien einzureisen? Also man braucht ein Passagierlokalisierungsformular, das online auszufüllen ist und im Anhang ähm, gebe ich Ihnen den Link, äh, unter dem das machbar ist und würde den auch gern im Anschluss an diese Sendung oder an an diese, an diese Präsentation an jeden, den es interessiert und der es gern haben möchte, verteilen. Im Moment noch ähm, gilt auch für die Einreise, dass ähm, alle Bürger aus dem EU-Binnenraum und aus den Schengen-Staaten einen negativen entweder PCR- oder Antigentest vorweisen müssen, der maximal 48 Stunden alt ist. Die Formulierung ändert sich, man kann schon fast sagen, täglich ein wenig, weil das Ziel ist, und das wurde eigentlich im Mai auch schon verkündet, dass man dazu übergeht, dass EU-Bürger, ähm, Schweizer, aber auch Amerikaner und Kanadier nach Italien einreisen können mit entweder äh, den vollen Impfungen, also der doppelten Impfung oder der einfachen Impfung oder als Genesene innerhalb von sechs Monaten nach der Genesung. Jetzt hat man das ein bisschen zurückgenommen und wieder besteht wieder auf dem negativen Test, vor allem deshalb, weil sich die EU noch nicht so ganz einigen konnte, welches Dokument denn da jetzt so das Gültige ist. Aber Schritt für Schritt sieht man schon an der Gesetzgebung, geht es jeden Tag darauf zu, dass wir bald hoffentlich ähm, dazu kommen, dass alle doppelt Geimpften oder Genesenen ohne, ohne jeglichen Test einreisen dürfen. So, und schließlich gibt es dann noch einige Regionen, in denen man sich auch bei der örtlichen Gesundheitsbehörde äh, melden muss. Das ist im Moment noch äh, die Abruzzen, Marken, Apulien, Sardinien, Toskana und Venetien. 
Auch hierzu gibt es einen Link, den ich im Anschluss ähm, gern weiterreichen möchte, denn wie in allen anderen Regionen ändert sich das sehr häufig. Wenn man dann in Italien ist, ähm, dann ist das Reisen innerhalb Italiens ähm, ohne jegliche Einschränkung möglich. Auch Italien hat ein Farbensystem, auf das ich gleich eingehen werde. Äh, Im Moment befinden sich alle Regionen Italiens in sogenannten weißen oder gelben Zonen und damit kann man frei innerhalb aller Regionen in Italien reisen. In den öffentlichen Verkehrsmitteln stehen offiziell 50 Prozent der Gesamtauslastung zur Verfügung. Ich denke, das Einzige, wo das tatsächlich kontrolliert ist, ist in den High-Speed-Zugverbindungen, wo man Plätze reserviert oder einen Platz kaufen muss. Man kann keine Fahrkarte kaufen, man muss einen Platz kaufen. Und da ist tatsächlich, stehen nur 50 Prozent zur Verfügung. Entschuldigung, ansonsten habe ich noch nie gesehen, dass irgendjemand an der S-Bahn Passagierzahlen zählt oder auch im Bus. Also das überhaupt nicht. Im Privatwagen ähm, kann, ähm, können Personen, die innerhalb eines Haushaltes leben, äh, natürlich ohne, ohne Gesichtsmasken fahren. Sollten in dem Wagen allerdings Personen aus mehreren Haushalten sitzen, dann gibt es eine Obergrenze von drei Personen und das Tragen äh, einer, einer Mund eines mund nasen ist Pflicht. Das Ganze gilt natürlich nur für Menschen, die schon 14 Tage vor der Einreise auch nur in den EU-Staaten oder in den Schengen-Raum waren. Es gibt ähm, eine, eine, eine App, eine Webseite vom italienischen Gesundheitsministerium, wo man sehr genau für jeden einzelnen Gast eingeben kann, aus welchem Land kommt er, welche Nationalität hat er, wo war er vorher. Und dann kommt speziell bezogen auf diesen Gast heraus, was dieser Mensch braucht, um nach Italien einzureisen. Aber das stelle ich noch zur Verfügung. Wenn wir auf die nächste Seite gehen, genau, äh, grundsätzlich in der Öffentlichkeit drinnen wie draußen ist das Tragen eines mund nasen Pflicht. Ähm, draußen, mit Ausnahme von Lazio, ähm, gilt diese Pflicht zum Tragen des mund nasen nur, wenn man sich in der Nähe von Personen fremder Haushalte befindet. Das heißt natürlich in allen Städten, auch in den von vielen so geliebten Märkten und so weiter, aber für Wanderungen, für Zugänge zur Stadt ist es keine Pflicht mehr, den mund nasen zu tragen. Wenn man Sport treibt, wer gerne joggen geht, braucht auch keinen mund nasen darf aber nur mit Personen des gleichen Haushalts zusammen Sport treiben. Kinder unter sechs Jahren brauchen nie einen mund nasen -Schutz. Und natürlich gibt es auch in Italien Personen, und das wird auch akzeptiert mit Sondergenehmigungen, die aus medizinischen Gründen und so weiter kein, kein, keine Maske tragen dürfen. Die Abstandsregeln generell äh, gilt ein Sicherheitsabstand von einem Meter mindestens. Ähm, gern ähm, wird es auch ein bisschen individuell äh, ausgelegt und der Übergang von einem bis anderthalb Meter ist relativ fließend. Ähm, in, zu, zu allen Geschäften, zu allen Restaurants, Supermärkten und so weiter wird äh, in Italien Fieber gemessen. Das ist unglaublich. Und der Zutritt ist tatsächlich nur für Personen, die eine Körpertemperatur unter 37,5 Grad haben. Wobei, aus eigener Erfahrung muss ich sagen, auch die Italiener wissen, dass wenn man lange in der Sonne gelegen hat oder viel Sport getrieben hat, das auch schon mal aus sehr gesunden Gründen höher sein kann. Und es wird äh, kein Alarmismus äh, betrieben, sollte jemand über dieser Temperatur liegen, sondern es wird in der Regel einfach nur ein netter Sitzplatz im Schatten und ein kaltes Glas Wasser angeboten. Man wartet eine halbe Stunde und dann hat sich das Thema meistens ähm, tatsächlich auch erledigt. Hand Sanitizer sind vorgeschrieben, sind Pflicht für alle Betreiber von äh, öffentlich zugänglichen Einrichtungen. Ähm, die, die Benutzung dieser ist manchmal Pflicht und manchmal nicht. Das ist äh, sehr abhängig vom Individuum. Aber ich, ich kann bezeugen, also sie zu benutzen ist nicht das Schlechteste. Sie riechen meistens sehr gut und für Italien sind sie natürlich aus den feinsten Zutaten gemacht ähm, <lacht> und sind recht angenehm zu, zu vertragen. So, auf der nächsten Seite kommen wir zu dem italienischen Farbsystem, das ich schon angesprochen habe. 
Es gibt bei uns vier Farben, Rot, Orange, Gelb und Weiß. Schon seit ungefähr vier Wochen, fünf Wochen, ähm, befinden sich alle Regionen Italiens in äh, der gelben oder in der weißen Zone. Weiß bedeutet ein ganz geringes Risiko und überhaupt keine Ausgangsbeschränkungen. Gelb bedeutet ein leichtes Risiko mit im Moment noch einer Ausgangssperre zwischen 24 Uhr und 5 Uhr morgens, die zum 21. Juni aber generell auch wegfallen soll. <lacht> Bars, Restaurants, Cafés, Eisdielen, alles, was wir an Italien so lieben. Der ähm, Außenbereich ist schon sehr, sehr lange geöffnet. Der Innenbereich ist jetzt seit drei Wochen geöffnet. <lacht> Im Außenbereich gibt es ein, ein Schild, das angibt, ähm, wie viele Personen, wie viele Gäste sich ähm, im Innenbereich aufhalten dürfen. Und diese Zahlen muss natürlich eingehalten werden. Ähm, ich ich muss sagen, wir haben glücklicherweise so oft schönes Wetter, dass der Innenbereich gar nicht so zur, zur, zur Geltung kommt. möchte aber auch darauf hinweisen, dass wir auch dieses Jahr wieder wie letzten Sommer schon damit zu rechnen haben, dass sehr, sehr viele Italiener ihren Sommerurlaub in den Monaten Juli und August im eigenen Land verbringen. Und da kann ich nur raten, den Gästen zu sagen, bitte Reservieren Sie ihr, ihren, ihren Tisch fürs Abendessen bereits einen Tag vorher. An den Tagen Donnerstag, Freitag und Samstag ist es in Italien regelmäßig so voll, dass es wirklich besser ist, egal wo man ist, ähm, abends eine Reservierung vorzunehmen. Konsumiert werden dürfen Speisen ähm, nur am Tisch mit maximal vier Personen ähm, oder noch mehr Personen, wenn es sich um Personen aus dem gleichen Haushalt äh, handelt. Das einzige Thema, das vielleicht den einen oder anderen nicht so ganz glücklich macht, ähm, Diskotheken, Tanzlokale und Clubs sind noch immer bis auf Weiteres geschlossen und da gibt es auch noch keine ähm, Aussicht auf Änderungen. Natürlich dürfen Hotels und Tankstellen ähm, auch außerhalb der Sperrzeiten Mahlzeiten servieren. Das ist äh, selbstverständlich. So, dann eine Erneuerung zu dem Farbsystem, das wir schon angesprochen haben. Vielleicht hab, haben Sie es gesehen. Äh, das erste Slide zeigte den Stand von vor einer Woche. Jetzt hat sich das noch mal gebessert. Jetzt sind noch mehr äh, Zonen in, in der weißen oder noch mehr Regionen in der weißen Zone. Also inzwischen kann man sagen, komplett Norditalien ist in der weißen Zone. Äh, der Süden hinkt dieses Mal ein bisschen hinterher. In der ersten Welle letzten Winter war es genau umgekehrt. Der, der Norden war extrem betroffen und der Süden nur sehr gering. Ähm, jetzt diesen Winter hat sich die Lage etwas verändert und die südlichen Regionen waren ein bisschen mehr betroffen. Aber auch auf äh, die südlichen Regionen sind auf einem sehr, sehr guten Weg der Besserung. Und wir erwarten, dass es noch mehr und noch mehr ähm, in die weiße Zone geht. <lacht> So, vor Ort, was kann man denn nutzen? Kulturelle Einrichtungen, ähm, Museen, ähm, Denkmäler und so weiter sind alle geöffnet, auch schon äh, seit Mitte April. Allerdings ist oft äh, eine Reservierung oder Buchung vorab notwendig und wird auch wie bei den Restaurants insbesondere für die Wochenende empfohlen. Theater, Konzerte und Kinos im Außen- und Innenbereich sind möglich. Es gelten für den Innenbereich natürlich neue Kapazitätsgrenzen. Die Themen- und Vergnügungsparks sind seit gestern wieder geöffnet. Und äh, wenn man eins drunter geht zu den Stränden, Badeanstalten und Wellness, da ist es wichtig zu wissen, das darf man auch ohne Mund- und Nasenschutz. Die öffentlichen Einrichtungen haben den Mindestabstand von einem Meter. Wenn man zu privaten Beachclubs geht, ähm, sind, die, sind die Abstände etwas größer, sind aber durch, die, durch das Möbelar, das aufgestellt wird, also sozusagen von den Betreibern schon vorher eingepreist und entsprechend aufgestellt und sofern man dann da reinkommt, hält man den Mindestabstand ein. Aber die, die gute Nachricht ist, hier ist keine Maskenpflicht. Ähm, Thermalzentren äh, haben auch seit gestern geöffnet. Hallenbäder und Wellnesszentren werden ab dem 1. Juli geöffnet. Mhm. 
für Geschäfte und Einkaufszentrum hatte ich schon gesagt, es gilt, dass überall Fieber gemessen wird. Manchmal, meistens bekommt man es auch gar nicht mehr mit, sondern man geht einfach an diesen Fieberscannern vorbei. Allerdings sollte die Temperatur unter 37,5 Grad sind und Hand Sanitizer, wie gesagt, überall zur Verfügung. So, und auf der letzten Seite, das ist eben... <lacht> Die Seite, die ich Ihnen gern weiterleiten möchte, denn da gibt es die tatsächlich immer die neuesten Informationen und den allerneuesten Stand, wo man das auch nachlesen kann. Es klingt jetzt alles sehr, sehr kompliziert. Es ist aber tatsächlich gar nicht so schwierig und doch äh, sehr einfach. Ähm, nachdem ich meine Vorredner gehört habe, muss ich, muss ich eingestehen, ich habe mich nicht darum gekümmert, was sein muss, wenn man zurück nach Deutschland, Schweiz oder Österreich äh, reist. Also für die Schweiz kann ich sagen, weil ich äh, fast jeden Tag äh, die Grenze in die Schweiz pas passiere. Man braucht dazu überhaupt nichts. Aber irgendwie bin ich wohl davon ausgegangen, dass die meisten Urlauber so glücklich in Italien sind, dass sie einfach gar nicht mehr zurückfahren. <lacht> ähm, ich ich äh, weiß, dass für Deutschland äh, ist, ist Italien kein Risikogebiet mehr. Ich nehme an, dass die, ähm, dass die Tests aber für Flugreisende zumindest noch immer notwendig sind. Tests, das ist noch ganz wichtig, gibt es in Italien in vielen Apotheken. Man kann über die Hotels nachfragen, wo denn die nächste Testmöglichkeit ist. Und in der Apotheke kann man ähm, mit Termin, aber auch ohne Termin hingehen und einen Test machen lassen. Muss allerdings privat bezahlt werden. Die Preise liegen zwischen 20 und 30 Euro pro Person. So, und dann bedanke ich mich ganz herzlich und hoffe, dass viele, viele Gäste sehr bald nach Italien kommen, noch mehr als wir derzeit schon haben. Vielen lieben Dank, Anja, für diese ausführliche Information über Italien. Wir schicken natürlich auch die Informationen gerne weiter an alle Teilnehmer, genau. die heute dabei waren. Und ja, last but not least, I'm very happy to welcome Fernando. CEO from Going Baltic, Baltic and Going Russia. Thank you very much Hello, everybody. for your uh, patience. And now it's your turn no to problem. give us news. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks everybody for waiting for me. And it's a pleasure to talk to you from St. Petersburg, Russia. So, uh, well, I will uh, talk differently because in one side we have the destination Russia, which is a country outside the European Union. And then in the other side, we have uh, the Baltic states with three countries that are members of uh, the European Union and of the Schengen area with a different implication that it has in terms of epidemiological uh, rules, etc. We are going to start with uh, Russia. Uh, now we can go to the next uh, to the next slide, Isabel. Yes, uh, in terms of restrictions of entrance, the borders of Russia are closed, excepting for some nationalities, among which is Germany. So the German citizens can now enter Russia per uh, touristic purposes whilst Austrian and Swiss uh, cannot for the moment, as most of uh, nationals from European Union countries. There is an exception on that, which is the ongoing uh, soccer tournament, the Euro 2020. St. Petersburg is hosting seven matches. And for, for this tournament, everybody that has an entrance and a fan ID can enter without any restrictions. But outside that, for other uh, touristic uh, purposes or other dates, uh, the Austrians and the Swiss cannot, Germans can. And then what is required? Only a PCR test made 72 hours before arrival and the usual uh, Russian tourist visa. In terms of restrictions, uh, as per the use of mask, it is uh, compulsory in public places, uh, transport, shops, museums and restaurants. Let's go to the next uh, to the next slide, please. And then, uh, in terms of uh, capacity restrictions in museums and restaurants, the maximum size of the group can be of twenty people maximum, excepting in two major museums, the Kremlin and the Hermitage, that are hosting groups of maximum ten packs. So, if the group is bigger, we have to split it in two groups with two guides. Restaurants are working with 50% of the usual maximum capacity, and there is uh, 1.5 meters of uh, compulsory social distance. 
Uh, the um, step of the vaccination, as you know, in Russia, there, there is a, a locally produced vaccine, which is uh, Sputnik V, with um, three more other vaccines, four uh, Russian-made vaccines in total now being uh, rolled out. Uh, till now, there is almost 15% of people vaccinated with at least one dose, with 10% of people uh, fully vaccinated. Uh, both Moscow and St. Petersburg have adhered to the standards of the Safe Travels uh, International Organization, uh, which are compulsory for all DMCs, transportation companies, and museums working now. So we must uh, adhere to the Safe Travels uh, Organization and we must uh, submit an audit and comply with the different uh, protocols and requirements as per hygiene and uh, COVID uh, rules observation. It is compulsory also for hotels, hotels, DMCs, restaurants, and transportation companies. So as per Russia, these are the main uh, points. Internally, tourism is uh, working uh, a lot. Russians are traveling uh, in this moment a lot, and they are let's say, substituting the foreign uh, tourists. But this means that uh, infrastructure is running on. So hotels are uh, working as usual, restaurants and museums as well. Now, if we go to the Baltic states, to the next slide, uh, situation is different and we are going to treat it country per country. As per uh, the three countries are members of the European Union and their situation epidemiologically is different. So each one of them has different requirements according to its present situation. We, we are gonna start with Estonia, which is the country that is uh, more COVID free. And so it has the most flexible regulations now. Who can enter? Uh, the residents and nationals of the European Union uh, or Schengen area like Switzerland with an infection rate below 150 cases per 1,000 uh, per 100,000 sorry inhabitants in the last 14 days. It covers all the three uh, German speaking countries. So Germany with uh, 50 little number of cases, uh, Austria uh, with also similar values and uh, Switzerland with 90. What is required just to fill up a health declaration 72 hours before arrival and to do a PCR test and both things can be waived if the person has recovered from COVID-19 or it is fully vaccinated with the, with the full uh, two doses of the vaccine done uh, at least uh, 14 days prior to the trip with a certificate. So in this case, the PCR test and the health declaration uh, form are not needed. And then as per restaurants and museums, no more restrictions for groups. Uh, they are working on 50% of their usual uh, maximum capacity and they are working until midnight. So we can say, that the requirements are quite flexible. If you are vaccinated, you can enter without uh, restrictions. And if not, you just do a PCR if you come from one of our three uh, countries. Now, if we go to Latvia, to the next, to the next one, situation is uh, more complicated here as uh, presently they have a rate of uh, a little bit above 200 cases per 100,000 inhabitants per, uh, on, uh, in the last 14 days. So Latvia is for now closed for tourism and it's possible to enter uh, without substantial reason, you know, work and training studies, etc., but not for tourism. These uh, regulations will be reviewed next at the end of uh, June. So in about a couple of weeks, and we expect these restrictions to be uh, relieved if the, uh, let's say the, the infection rate keeps going down as it's doing now. But for the moment, it is not possible to come uh, here for tourism. And then if we go to Lithuania, 
which is the last and the southernmost one. Uh, there is a mandatory self-isolation of uh, seven days for all uh, travelers coming, but today, uh, Lithuania, I mean, yesterday uh, during the day, has introduced uh, a new regulation, this system of uh, green and orange uh, countries. And now uh, Germany uh, makes part of the orange uh, countries. So uh, there is only a test PCR required or uh, end of 48 hours uh, questionnaire done, 48 hours before uh, coming to the country. So tourism is possible for a German tourist and Austrian, not for Swiss yet, because they, are, uh, they have a number of uh, cases which is still above the orange limit. As per the museums, uh, the groups are authorized until 25 uh, people. So no problem uh, for usual for the usual size of groups that we used to, to to have in these days masks and social distances have to be uh, masks have to be worn and social distance is 1.5 meters and in the restaurants uh, there is a maximum of four adults for uh, from two different households at the same table so we manage it doing several tables of four people in the same restaurants opening hours are without main uh, restrictions from 7 a.m. to uh, midnight. So now we can conclude that in uh, Estonia it's uh, possible to uh, come from Germany, uh, Austria and Switzerland without restrictions. In Latvia it's not possible from any of the countries and in Lithuania from Germany and Austria. The vaccination rates is, are similar to the ones in, uh, in all European Union countries. So in Estonia and Lithuania, there are around 40% of people vaccinated with at least one dose. In Latvia, is a little bit slower, is around 30% of people vaccinating with one dose, with uh, the rates of vaccination going up and up and up every day, a little bit like it's happening in, in Germany, Austria, and other European Union uh, countries. So that's the situation that we have uh, now and uh, well as per the Baltic states we hope to receive tourists very very soon and, and in Estonia we're already having groups that are coming in the next days and in Russia uh, well some some Germans are coming for uh, Swiss and Austrians we will have to wait a little bit still Thank you so much, Fernando, for this uh, very interesting information. And we hope that all the countries will open very soon to all our clients. And I just, we saw, hope so. <laughs> I just saw in the question and answer, answer box a few questions. The first one is going to Maria from Greece and to Lucy from France. It's mm -hmm. about uh, if the regulations are also applied for all the Austrian customers in terms of uh, entry to the country and all the measurements. Uh, Maria, would you like to answer? Yes, uh, this uh, everything that we have explained uh, that apply actually for the German market, uh, apply also for the uh, Austria market. Uh, and uh, the only that I cannot confirm you for sure is because I don't have yet information if the if Austria is accepting back the clients without PCR test. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, still, we don't have any information. I don't know if you have information uh, because I know that Germany is accepting back uh, the clients uh, without if they are fully vaccinated uh, uh, without PCR. I don't have this information yet from Austria and uh, this has to be replied actually to me by you. <laughs> Okay, because, we will we will double check on that, Maria. Because you know that uh, the European countries they don't keep uh, uh, presently uh, they don't keep all their all their same policy. So I know that France is accepting the clients without PCR uh, back uh, to back home. I mean, uh, Germany is accepting back home without PCR. Italy as well, uh, Switzerland as well. I don't know about Austria. Okay, we will check. I mean, I just know that Austria, you don't need uh, a PCR, um, an antigen test could be also working, but I'm not sure about Greece, but we will double check that. Yes. But uh, to enter Greece, it's the same like for the German speaking market, right? Yes, exactly. To enter okay. Greece is exactly the same, fully vaccinated clients uh, 
uh, they don't, uh, uh, we don't require a PCR test. Perfect. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. Uh, Lucy? Thank you, Petra. Thank you, Maria. Uh, I will be very quick because it's exactly the same answer as Maria said for Greece. So to, to answer France, you can um, simply follow the same rules than uh, Germany when you come from Austria. So it's, it's super easy and you can come either with vaccination uh, certificate or PCR test or antigen uh, from 48 hours. So Perfect. it's again, very easy. <laughs> Super great. Thank you very much. And I have one last question, uh, which says, Anya, is this your office? <laughs> uh, this is my home office. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so no, it is. Uh, I'm, I'm at home. Yes. I home think office. it's all about the picture with the Prosecco in the back. On the yes, bed. yes. Uh, I think it gives a good <laughs> spirit to everyone to come have a glass of Prosecco and start relaxing after this really dreadful long time. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, Anya. I think these have been wonderful words to end this uh, today live update session we all take a glass of prosecco or champagne we have sunshine here it's almost like summer so now we can only uh, go to your destinations to also have a little bit more summer feeling or more cultural feeling thank you so much that you all had uh, time to participate to give us the newest update and thank you for all people for all our clients who joined this update and if you have any further questions please don't hesitate to contact us str team is always there for you to help you out and i wish all of you a lovely day and once again thank you so much for being with us stay safe and hope to see you all in person very soon bye bye thank, thank you bye thank you very much bye. 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 Bye.